Hey y'all, welcome to part six. Yes, I know, six. This is the very, very long series, but I want to share everything I do on this saw. I'm loving th this channel. I love the subscribers. I love you all. I even love the ones that just pass through, watch a little bit, whatever. I don't care. That's fine. I love doing this stuff. I couldn't be more grateful for the community the community that we're all in through Buckin, uh, Bellhopper, Ten Man, Nick Pixel, buddy. I gotta talk to you tonight. And uh, you know, Casterman, Tasman, everyone. I, there's so many names. I I feel like I known you got you all for so long, and the the name. The, the the name list is just grows and grows and grows. I can't even name you all. It's crazy. 906. Billy from Philly. Justin Weaver. I mean, forgive me. I, I you know, I got to stay stop stay away from saying names cuz I feel bad when I miss somebody. And I feel terrible. I really do. I feel terrible when I miss somebody. And the names, the list just keeps growing and growing. I just, I, I'm just, so, I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. And I'm pretty stoked in how this saw is go, coming together. As you all seen last video, on part five. Where we left off is right where it is. Whoa, hello. Sorry, sorry, I uh, lost control there. So, so the next step I need to get done, okay, we need to get the coil and all that done. Uh-oh, something just blew off there. Oh, that's the uh, whole thing. All right, also, what I'm doing here, I'm going to leave this point because this is a built-in coil, okay, or a stationary coil, whatever you want to call it, so it's all one piece. You, you can't adjust nothing, okay. This is a point set up. Now, when I first got this all, it did run, sort of. We did find some problems. The diaphragm was stuck to the body of the carb, so it didn't run properly at all okay it didn't run at all it did not very well so what i like to do on some of these older saws especially as tin man says turd saws because of what I, what it is is the squish which is the compression ratio and the top of your your piston is so wide there's no hardly any compression so it's very very low compression which hopefully with the porting job we help that that we help that out a little bit I don't know why I'm pointing down y'all can see my ugly mug that's all right <laughs> see this this is all this coil here yeah that's for the uh, the pull start yeah that's the coil. It was super, super dirty, so there's no way for me to even zip tie it, tape it, nothing. It would not have stuck. It would just come undone anyway. So I just left it undone and hung it on the wall. Oh, Nick, Nick, you're falling. Nick and Katie are falling off the wall here. Trying to jump into the project, I suppose. There we go. There we go. So, so next we need to get this in there, and and I want I say that because this the coil wire which is cracking a little bit there, huh? This is a little clip that's up under here, okay? When this goes into, you kind of see right where it sits. Uh, you might not see it in there, but there is a little witness mark right here. You'll kind of see where it goes, 
a little smaller right there. Big, big to small, big, yep. So that's where this has to go into. And it will be easier to do it when it's loose. So, now I'm going to put you all on pause. And I need to find the bolts for this. So, I need to punch. Oh, what I was saying earlier, I apologize. I'm so excited. I'm just so pumped. I'm feeling the energy. Saturday's live feed, or Sunday's live feed, it just threw me over the edge. I was in a very giving mood. I just, I love, I was, I just absolutely loved it. I wish I could do live feeds and I, oh, I'm probably getting some trouble doing live feeds, but I would love to do a live feed with y'all. But anyway, um, I'm going to take, leave this here, but I'm going to um, change over to a um, a chip, Elect uh, electronic chip emit, so we're going to get rid of these coils. That way it will be an easier start when you go to pull them. So we're going to get rid of the points. One, I'm sure I could find them. And I'm sure there's, it don't look nothing, the points don't look bad that, at all. But points can be somewhat inconsistent. So we're just going to get rid of that. And we're just going to go right to the chip. Some don't believe doing that, but hey. Hey my saw. If you don't believe it, build your own saw. Right? Gotta get that cleaned up too. That connection. So, uh, I will be right back. I am going to find I'm going to pull all the stuff for the carb and the reeds all that, as well as the bolts and whatnot, everything I'm going to need. I just got so excited, I just jumped into it, very unprepared. I apologize. So, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Found it pretty easy. Not a big deal. Okay, so, next. So, what we need to do, so we got to get this. Wire, spark plug wire, fed it through the bottom here. That pushes right up in that little clip. All right. Okay, and then that. Get right over there. Nicely. Hopefully nicely. Okay. Now we can just kind of shove everything together here. not too bad. Only downside to that okay well I guess not really downside. We gotta get our gasket in here. Sets in between the body here and the opening. Now this is cut I made sure to cut it just right so it sits in there just fine. So you'd be able to set it right down on the uh, 
the bottom there and it should be right in that same spot. The holes will line up once we put our uh, bolts through it. Now I did look at the reeds. We do have a issue with the reeds a little bit. They're, um, they need to be adjusted. You can see a little bit of light through three of them. So we got one good one. So we're going to have to play around with our reeds. Make sure they sit nice and flat. Now they, these are pretty thin materials, so you want to be super, super, super careful with these. You bend them, and well, you'd be getting replacement reeds or a replacement whole reed body with reeds, uh, most likely aftermarket. Yep. We want to make sure they sit flat. Yep. Yeah, make sure they sit flat uh, when they're just sitting on there. So, but that could be a later time. So, I need to stoke the fire here pretty soon. It's starting to get a little chilly. All right. So we got our gasket in there. I'm gonna pull on our line a little bit, our fuel line. That snugs everything up real nice. So, as you can see, very nice. Very, very nice. All right, so we have three bolts to connect. Need something here. Set, lean this up. So we have our three bolts we need to put into our coil. Our whole coil body, I should say. There we go. <laughs> All right. So we can bring you in a little closer. How's this? Okay. So we have one ear in the back. I'll go ahead and remove that little wire there. One in the back here. And then two up here, top and bottom. I'm going to get my socket out. Well, you know what I'm going to do? Just because it's me. Almost feels like I didn't shut the door. Put a little tiny bit of block tape on there. Just a little dab will do. We're going to get our little cover here. Or put back on as well. Uh, other bolts. This thing will stationary or uh, set itself right in place. Pretty close. What are we doing on time? 14 minutes? Oh, we might be actually get something done in this one. Yep. So that's... The bolts help line it up right into place. So we're just going to go around, uh, snug them up. And then we go through and tighten those bolts up. we go I hope you all feel the energy I'm feeling it it's just pumping through my veins 
As a saw builder, this is the best part. It don't matter how many saws I built, how many small engines I built, when it's going put uh, all together like this, it's just a beautiful feeling. I love it. Yep, I just, I just absolutely love this part. All right, now we get our handle put in place. We have one bolt at the bottom we can put in. Again, I like the Loctite. Just a little bit of blue. Use blue on pretty much everything. Which is surprised I only have a little tube of it. Get our socket here. I'm not going to tighten this down all the way just yet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stick this wire back on there just in case I don't forget or lose it. That would be my luck. All right. For the points, for right now, we're just going to leave those in that alone right now until I get the little chip, ignition chip. Oop. So we're going to go ahead, Ooh. put that on there. Oh wait, that don't go on there. We're just going to put our little cover on there, help clean, keep it clean. I'm not sure exactly where that little felt part goes yet until we get the Y wheel and all that set up. Well, we can take it off for right now. And leave it over there. All right. There we go. Yep, that will work out perfect. Perfect. Okay, next, we can go over here, this side, we have the, another brass line we need to put in, okay, and this one will snake all through this thing, and I gotta remember which way it goes exactly, this way, yep, oh yeah, <laughs> the ends are different, now this one has a little rubber piece. It goes right in there. So we'll get this in started. Because I know this got a little bit out of shape. So we'll get this threaded in there in place. I don't like my, my, uh, yeah, that just come undone. Oh, lovely. I gotta take the handle back part. Oh, our gasket fell out. Alright, so, now we have to, uh, get this part bent back into shape in this little grommet here back into the slot and use this screwdriver here just to gently raise it up a little bit push our line in there we go just like that okay 
I am missing a wrench. There it is. Oh, that's even the wrong wrench. Five sixteenths. So I'll get this in there tied in. I think we lost our gasket again. Yes, we did. switch over here to the back right here so this the line kind of have to get it reshaped into place but this will go right up here and like I said I do a little sh shaping which is good that it's in brass because it is Pliable, easy to get back into shape. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna need a little more fed through up there. Back. All right, there we go. There we go. Oh, I got it started. Now that I know is a 7 sixteenths. Okay, 3 eighths I meant. Well, in the last couple videos, we got quite a bit done. Just uh, pretty much little stuff from here on out. Beautiful saw coming together. Doesn't that look pretty? So now I'm just gonna take my screwdriver real gently pry and move our brass line to line it up just a little bit so we're not rubbing on nothing. all our lines straightened out moved over that looks pretty good to me not gonna be rubbing on nothing so we got all our lines put in they're not touching they're not gonna rub on nothing they're following their natural routes There we go. And then we've got a little rubber plug in there. Everything's looking good. Looking good. Look at that. I'm going to have to take apart the handle again. Our uh, linkage came apart. Which is probably a good thing to put the carb on. Apparently we will have enough, more than enough room to get our gasket in there for later. 
Well, now it kind of wants to stay in place now. Pretty decently tight in there now. All right. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and tighten down this bottom bolt because I know now it's not going to move. There we go. Voila, folks. Look at there. Look at there. We have a saw. Pretty much. <laughs> Everything's all nice and clean and pretty and shiny. Yep, that's what I like to see. And, I, and I'm, I'm liking the fact that we made the fuel line is, is blue. Instead of the uh, yellow or the traditional black rubber hose, personally, I don't like rubber with gas. It, it, it's not good. I don't like it. I do see a little bit of a rub right there going. But I can fix that real quick. No big deal. Between the two lines up here. Gently pressing away. There we go. Alright. No more issues. So, that's that, folks. I hope you all enjoy that. Something slid in it. Oh. <laughs> Bar tension. So, yeah. We're going to pretty much leave this side like it is until we get that chip in here and then we can figure out where we're going to mount it. And then also, we do have a little bit of work to do to those covers as well. The covers. I ordered some white powder coat, the SD, just like the rest of it. Apparently I forgot to order it. And didn't order with the rest of the supplies. So that's coming. Yep. And uh, we already have decals for it. The original style decals. It'll look pretty close to the original. So I'll now show you how do you do a two-tone color with powder coat. It's a pretty interesting process. It's a little more time consuming, but it's it can be done. Not an issue. Yep, that's that. So, anyway, I hope you all have a good night, morning, evening, whatever it is, you're part of the world. Uh, I'm pretty stoked. This It's coming right along together. It's 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 just cooking. We're, we're cruising on it now. Yep, I got some more parts to clean up and get organized and whatnot. And, uh... Be a little more prepared on <laughs> this next video, which I don't know will be with uh, the powder coating of the covers or some more mechanical work over here. So, well, there you have it, folks. I uh, thank you for watching and sticking around with me. If you watched it this far, I I really appreciate it. You're a trooper. There you have it. Home Light Super XL, 100% manual. Oh yeah, I can hear it. It works. Manual oiler. It's not the automatic. Manual. So, all right, folks. I love y'all. Stay safe. Be kind, and please spread the love. I'll see you on the next video.